Bill Bent's story is based on his experience as a leader in the mortgage industry, but also his miraculous recovery from severe traumatic brain injury. He now speaks on embracing change, balancing your priorities while maintaining integrity. He explains how to align your body, mind and spirit to maintain an optimal life. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Ben. Good afternoon, everybody. It's my pleasure to be up here talking. As we've covered today so far about embracing change and balancing your priorities and maintaining always integrity, we've talked on two of the tools, which is your body and then your mind. But I now want to move on to your spirit as a tool to be able to embrace the change and balance your priorities and maintain integrity. On, this, on the tool of spirit, as I talk about it, I'm going to now start talking about the term energy. And with energy, I'm going to start talking about how you can work your energy, both from a negative perspective, both from the positive perspective. And your energy will have a big impact on your neuroplasticity. And when I talk about neuroplasticity, that's the ability to use all of your brain in the remapping sense and the electro forces that you can put through your brain to get that geniusness within you to emerge. So as I've mentioned on neuroplasticity and then energy, so on our spirit, on our energy, um, do you remember those times in your life when you met that person and they were so calming on you and you just felt so much in, in mindfulness? And when you left those conversations, we always just said, I want to be better. I can be like that. Well, and then how about those times in our life where we meet that person, it's like a blender on high. And oh my gosh, the nervousness, the anxiousness that will come out. We feel like if we could, we go like, woo. And how we react and we move on from those situations. Well, prior to my accident, I was always viewed as the person of peace and the joy that I would permeate. But due to all the shearing damage of my brain and all the remapping that occurred, it was no longer. I was no longer like that. And that greatly impacts our ability to embrace change and how we deal with change, our actual energy. So after my accident and after I got back home, I would at times just start thinking about my accident self, the in person that I had the impact with, and, I, and anger would all of a sudden just emerge in me, and resentment would show up. And even some of that emotion I would project at my wife. I'd project at my family. And I would start to judge myself. I judged myself from how I was before the accident to how I was right now and criticized myself. And I even would judge other people. So one morning, early after I got back from the hospital, I looked up in the mirror and I looked at that person in the mirror and I said, Bill, you got a big spiritual gap. Well, as we talk about a big spiritual gap, fortunately, there was a book sitting on my kitchen counter that is transcending your level of consciousness, which is all about the spirit, all about, about your level of consciousness. And I reminded myself that quantum physics, the study of matter, has proven that we're a spiritual being in a physical body. So I hand wrote that little note on a piece of paper, put it on my bedside table, that little note just said that we're a spiritual being in a physical body. And I would look at it every night, and I would look at it every morning. And certainly I didn't want to be the evil spirit. I wanted to be the loving, peaceful, joyful spirit. And during that process did I have to many times when that negative energy show up, and it happened while I was in the house, I ran find that note and just kept reminding myself just to transform myself, if you will. And then also I just um, relearned that the law of attraction and energy attracts like kind energy. And so I had to remind myself of that aspect to improve how I saw the world, how I experienced the world. As I kept working on my energy, I would sit on the couch in the evening and be watching the TV 
and worry and doubt and all those nasty things would show up in my head. And I would, because of my, um, because of my nerve connectivity, because of the amount of nerve damage I had in the central nervous system, my energy would greatly impact how I physically felt. And so I developed a little drill. When I would get those negative energy aspects, my little drill was just to put on a smile. And the impact that would have, and the energy, and all of a sudden I'd be like, whew, I feel so much better. Just the act of smiling, the act of laughing. Well, and studies have shown that children will laugh 400 times a day, and adults only eight times a day. And the impact that has on our health and our view on life. So as I moved on off the couch, then I start thinking of the business world. And in business, when we get our leads, when we have the opportunity to try and convert those leads into clients, those clients, they get our energy. They, they're an element of them doing business with us is based upon our energy because ultimately the client wants to know, like, and trust you. And then, <clears throat> Our energy is composed of certainly how we view the world, but certainly our, um, our attitude, but then certainly our body language, our facial expression, the words that we choose to use. All that will comprise what we're projecting out as our energy. And I am always amazed that 2,000 years ago, the Toltec Society even figured this out. And they had the four agreements. And the four agreements are, number one, always be impeccable with your word. The Greek definition of impeccable, non-sin. And Gandhi even shared with us, with, the, with us, which is certainly our beliefs become our thoughts. Our thoughts become our words. Our words become our action. Our action become our habits, and our habits become our values. And our values, each one of you, is your destiny. <coughs> the second agreement of Toltec, was, of Toltec Four Agreements, don't take anything personal. When anyone's talking to you and they're projecting at you, maybe they're judging you, maybe they're criticizing, you're just getting to experience their movie, how they're composed, and their energy is. And then the third agreement, don't make assumptions. Good luck on that one. But if you can minimize assumptions, you will certainly change how you see the world and how you make decisions. A couple little simple skills to minimize assumptions. <coughs> Become very excellent at asking open-ended, empowering questions. And then certainly increase your listening to be very intuitive listener. And as you grow those skills, you'll make less assumptions. And the fourth agreement was always do your best. So to close on our energy, when we are in that negative energy, we're going to see less opportunities than really that do exist. They're going to shrink. Because ultimately, when we're negative energy, it's all about our ego. We're trying to identify everything through ourselves, through our ego. And our ability to critically think, to become excellent decision making is going to get minimized when we're in that process. Now, when we're back into positive energy, when we get into the highest levels of positive energy, we're going to just see a world of abundance and just unlimited opportunities and how to apply excellent critical thinking to get through every issue that we're dealing with. Well. If you want to learn more on energy, I encourage you to go to an excellent coaching organization called IPEC Coaching. That is, their principal concept is all based upon energy and how to help improve and see the world from different levels of, of your energy. And ultimately, you will then be more powerful at embracing change, at balancing your priorities, and maintaining your integrity. Thank you.